Scare. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the new Wildwood Lair. I'm with John Brando from Wildwood. John is kind of the Fendersman here. I'm kind of the Fendersman. He's the Fendersman. And we're here to talk to you about, let me get this doggone thing out here. Someone likened these things to the fanny pack. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna go along with that 100%. But I did learn a new thing from our friend Ken Haas. You just simply attach it to your shirt back here. And it's out of the way. And then you can deploy it at will so you don't have the fanny pack situation. Although it is actually closer to where you would keep a fanny pack. Correct, so there's some, there's some <laughs> unity there. There's some symbiosis. All right, we're uh, messing with these new Fender Ultra guitars, and this is the first time I've actually had my hands on one. And uh, it's very comfortable to play, I'll tell you that. It's very conducive, all you know, the different vibratos and bends and so on and so forth. Very easy to execute on this bad boy. Excellent. That's what they were hoping for. Well, there it is. Yeah. It's the ultra-modern version of a classic Stratocaster. I like this kind of talk, John. Yeah. I see what you're doing. Well, that's what they're doing. I wish I was doing that. Well. I'm just talking about it. We're all part of the same guitar universe. That's true. The guitar-verse? Is there a... Is there a Gregism the for the axe verse? The axe verse. That sounds weird. That sounds like something you might need some salve for. <laughs> what? I'm sure there's a there's a body spray called axe verse. <laughs> yeah, ask a teen, ask a millennial. They'll set you straight. So let's talk a little bit about some of the. Uh, maybe we should start with the back here with these little body contours yeah, and things that they added because I know in the past uh, they had some of these features, but this is like to the next levs. Yeah, this one, I believe they actually contoured around my body because it's extra big, so it fits an extra large As I like tummy. to say, it it, it uh, helps mitigate the Milwaukee goiter. <laughs> you can Absolutely. play with more comfort. Exactly. Should you like to have an extra helping or two? There's nothing wrong with that. That's totally true. It's nice to know that there's uh, a guitar company that is looking out for the individual who does not like to be schemish around the caloric intake. Hey. Is that wrong? A burger's a burger. You're damn right. Serve it up, pipe it hot. Am I right, Paul? Paul's gonna give us a thumbs up on that, <laughs> if you could hear us, but yeah, hey. He can't. He can't, but that's good. We're keeping them alive, we're keeping them sound. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's talk, we got the larger abdominal yeah. accommodator, as I like to <laughs> yeah, call it. abdominal accommodator, it's good, it's good. Then uh, the, the body is beveled back, plus the four bolt asymmetrical uh, plate on here. Yeah, I don't know so, if they can see that, but it's kind of, uh, yeah, they can yeah, see that. Yeah, nice look at that. Right and look at, look at, look at, if we turn it this way just a little bit. Oh, look at, oh, there's yeah. an extra contour in here. No more tucking your thumb under on this baby. Yeah, there's a lot of comfort there where you can do all kinds of malfeasance up here. Exactly. And there's also a little room for a little. Sometimes I'm playing and I got gum in my mouth. And, and I'm going to pop it right here in this little extra cavity right here. And then when it. I need to chew it again, I'm going to put it right back in my old mouth hole, my old pie Perfect. hole. Perfect. That's so that's there. nice. That's an totally added feature, added value. Yep, absolutely. Comfort playing and gum, you know, depository. <laughs> that's weird. One hundred percent. Right. Yep. But I like this because sometimes you're up here and you want to go up there and go. But there's that corner on there that causes pain, but this mitigates that pain. So. Yep. People who are playing up there can't make the pain face when they're playing because it's, it's not legit because they're in total comfort. It's true slug face and not pain face. That's right. Yep. It's awesome. Yeah, you just gotta, oh, I see it. And I and I <laughs> embrace it. Okay, dig it. All right, so we got that, and we've got 10 to 14 inch radius, right? 10 to 14 inch radius, 22 frets. 22 frets, which is perfs. Medium jumbos. Because you want tall but yep. not wide? Yep. And wide. And, uh, and in keeping with the modern playability but vintage tone, they kept a bone nut on here. So bone nut! No, no craziness, no modern craziness in the nut area. Bridge is still pretty traditional, uh, you know, slightly modern uh, version, but it's uh, the general idea is that it's it's a vintage Strat with all the modern playability. I did notice that they did something different with this S1 switch. It does different functionality now. That S1 switch on the tr the SSS Strat uh, now adds the neck pickup into whatever you're doing. Right. It's kind of cool. So we can get that kind of, uh, so if I'm on the bridge. Yeah, then... Now you're a telly in the middle position. For the kids, I like yeah. it. Yeah. And then of the course you get like all, that. and then in that position, it's all three. Correct. Cool, I like that. And of course the treble bleed switch, so you don't lose any highs and you turn the volume down. Absolutely, every single good album, the Jazzmaster, the Telecasters, they all have the treble bleed, they all have the S switch. Each S switch does its own thing. fun and fun thing. Yeah, tellies I think are like phase 
flipper doos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the Jazzmaster has like a phase flippy on the upper switch that then gives you the extra control. And then the S switch uh, does parallel conversions, I believe. I can dig it. Yeah. All right. So you have a Jazzmaster that does all sorts of fun things. I like it. Just turn that volume down so we can hear what that sounds like. Uh, I'm in the two position right now, and I got the gain on the amp, but I just want to show how we volume full up. Let's back off on that volume a little bit. That feels good. Yeah. Yeah, there's a guy named Max at Fender. He's a very cool guy, and he's been working very hard. I believe this is kind of his pet project. So, Max, thumbs Max up. Max is from Milwaukee. Max I've known is... Max since we both That's had hair. Right. Actually, he still has hair. Yeah. <laughs> we had more hair. Yeah. Yes, I've known Max for a long time. Yes. I think Max is a kind of a purveyor of the vintage, but, he, man, he's his heart lies in the modern. So... Yes. Makes makes sense that this is what would kind of come out of there, but yeah, he's uh, he's very proud of those pickups and right, rightfully so. They sound awesome. They do sound good. I like it. Yeah, I also like just a little these these knobs are a little bit more like the fifty four Strat knobs. They're a little they're a little larger, uh -huh. larger faced, which I dig. I don't spend enough time ever touching those to notice that. Oh, the tone controls? You're not a tone controlsman? I'm not a tone controlsman. I like to mess around a little bit. You know, get a little syrup in there. Sometimes you want to back off. You want to mitigate the brights. Yes. And get some woman tone in there. Yeah. Of course, you probably can't say that anymore, woman tone, because it probably is against some kind of rule. But that's what they used to call it when you would roll off the tone control when you got gain on to get a little bit of that. Let's try it once. Let's, let's not be afraid of it. Let's yeah. go. Oh, I, I, I grabbed the woogie bar and I took it right out. <laughs> I grabbed Mr. Wiggles and he went with me. Oh, that was weird. Mr. Wiggles. <laughs> Yeah, that sure works. Yeah, it works. It that sure tone control does. works. And Mr. Wiggles works good because you have uh, the locking tuners. Lock, locking tuners. So every uh, modern-esque guitar needs locking tuners. I, so. I think I've always liked locking tuners because you know you want to change strings on the fly. Boom, or just changing strings. Period. It's just right. can be a nightmare. Yeah, there's always those. Unless you have people, I don't have people that change strings for me. Yeah, me either. So I do it on the fly ski, and it's nice <laughs> to have the locking tuners. You just go. Bah, 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 yeah. Or I always like to say when you're playing a gig. And you only bring one guitar, and it's got locking tuners. If you break a string, you have a, a floating tremolo, and you end up going to some kind of pan-Egyptian tuning. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But when your guitar is way out of tune, you're like, oh, my God, I better put a new string on, or else I'm not going to be in tune. You look at the bass player, and you say, dude, help me out. And he starts going, and before the place completely empties out because there's a bass solo going on, <laughs> you could put that string on lickety-split, put it all the way through, and then go, put it, snip it, back, bass solo, tastefully done, abbreviated, powerful. You chime right back in. You've saved the world. Yep. So those of you who haven't seen the Greg, Greg Cock Trio yet, he doesn't have a bass player. Well, I do like bass players, but we, yeah, the organ, Toby on the organ covers the, the low-end activity. <laughs> they do make basses as well. Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> Uh, hey, I think the only thing, we, other thing we should talk about, Greg, is these uh, magnificent colors. Yeah, yeah right. let's do that. These things come in fantastic colors. So this is Cobra Blue. Mm. I don't know, Gre uh, Mr. Paul, are we fully capturing the uh, the, the the fantasticness of this uh, this blue? Look at the look at the Cobra Blue. I do like blue, and this is a beautiful iteration of a blue, but I'm a little worried about a cobra that's this color. I'm thinking it's a <laughs> circulatory issue, but be that as it may, I'm not going to judge. I'm just going to say, boy, that's a nice blue. Look at that. There's a nice, there's a nice shot. With a little yeah. bit of reflection on there as well. Oh, look at that. Mm, it's like looking into the multiverse. Oh, it says cobalt. Cobalt. Thank you. Oh. So it's it not cobra. Well, that we had fun with that, though. People <laughs> never did. forget. It's cobalt blue, not cobra blue, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Thanks, th thank goodness for Paul. But, Mr. Paul, he helped yeah, us like out. It. Here we go. This is this is a uh, this is Mocha Burst. That's cool. This one's my my personal favorite. And uh, there's cool. also another one called Texas Tea, which I don't think we have with us. But it looks black, 
until the sun hits it just right, because uh, I'm assuming you're only playing outdoor gigs with it. Well, and uh, and then it has this gold Texas tea thing going on. So, yeah, these are all pretty awesome. Nice work, Fender. Yeah, these are cool. Definitely uh, tweaked modern versions, but a lot of the classic smidgen still in there to keep it legit. The vibe's alive. The vibe is alive. Well, cool. Well, thanks, John, for spending a little time with us in the Absolutely. new Wildwood Lair to give us a little lowdown on these axes. Of course, you can peruse the, uh, the Fender page on the Wildwood website to uh, see the specific morsels that we've talked about. And uh, there you have it. Thanks yeah. for tuning in, cats. We'll see you on the flippity and the floppity. Mm -hmm.